Hello and welcome to the third in our series of recorded webinars showcasing some of the functionality of NWA Quality Analyst. In this session we're going to look at some of the tips and tricks within the software that can make your SPC charting and reporting a little easier. It's also going to cover some of the things we get commonly asked in technical support. One of the first things that you'll probably want to do after installing Quality Analyst, and even trial version, is to change the date format into the European setting. So to do this, from the main Quality Analyst window we go to Settings, and then choose the date format from the General tab. So here we're going to change this to European, so that it appears in the D slash M slash Y format. When you've made this change, or indeed any other setting changes within the settings page, always click on save and then OK and this updates the quality analyst configuration to reflect your changes. Whilst we're here it's also a nice idea to add in your company name so that it becomes the default title for your graphics and reports. You can even tick this box so that quality analyst will always prompt you to enter additional graphics or report comments when you create charts. If I select this option and click on Save, we'll launch up a data set and see what that does. So here I have my classic elements data set. I'm just going to highlight my variable for lead and create an individual's chart. And because of that setting, we now have to enter an additional comment. And when we click OK, we can see that our chart contains our company name and title as we set it in the screen and also our custom text that we just added. Another useful feature is the ability to group charts very quickly. We've got our lead variable highlighted and it's very easy for me to create a process capability histogram an individual's chart and even a median and individual's chart if I specify a subgroup. But now that I have all those charts I might want to group them together so I can use the options at the top of the graphics window. I can cascade them or I can tile them vertically or I can tile them horizontally. What I might want to do, however, is use my group option at the top here and choose from one of the standard template formats in which to display my files. And once you've got your template format, it is just a matter of dragging the SPC charts into the appropriate positions where you want them and then expanding the group. And that is now ready to be sent to the printer or saved as a graphics file. If you want to send this analysis to people that don't have Quality Analyst on their system, you can always save as a different file format. The default format, NWG, is Quality Analyst's own graphics format. But you can also choose from standard graphics files like JPEG or Windows bitmaps. For this example we're going to choose a JPEG and we're going to save our group to our desktop So we've saved our file as quality analysis, click on save, and now when we close this down we now have a standard picture file on our screen. And if we launch up Word, which could be our quality report, we can then put that file as part of our Word document and save it and email it to whoever may want to see it. So if I drag my file across it gets embedded into Microsoft Word and it can be saved as a Word document and then emailed to whoever needs to see that information. One of the most common requests we get in technical support is how to modify the x-axis on control charts. If I open up the elements dataset and 
have a look at my variable for lead. If I perform an individual's chart on this particular variable, we can see that the x-axis contains just the row number of the data being analysed. Now it might be more helpful if we were able to include the date that the test was conducted. In order to do this, we can close down our chart and we go to the parameters menu and we select the option at the top for file. In the area on the right hand side we have an option to set description variables and these are the variables that will appear on the x-axis of our chart. So if I highlight date and click on select and then OK, the next time I generate an individual's chart the date is now added to the x-axis. You can zoom in on a particular region using the standard graphics tools and you can see that there's an entry for each date as a data point. Now it's also possible to add additional descriptive variables to our x-axis. So if we close down our elements data set and open up another data set from the tutorial folder, this one's called lumber, it's about logging information, we can see that as well as date being recorded, the crew number and the shift and the species has also been entered. And it may be that we want to display this information on our control chart. So first of all, if we create an individual's chart for our logs variable, we can see that the information has been added for date, crew, shift and species, exactly in the same manner as before. However, our x-axis does start to look a little bit cluttered as the information is now piled on top of one another. It helps a little bit if we zoom in on part of the chart, however we've still got a rather unusual looking x-axis. What we might want to do is hide some of this information so that whilst the date is still displayed, the information about crew, shift and species is only available when we highlight a particular data point. If we want to do this, we close down our chart and go to our parameters menu and select the option for file. And here we can see that they've added crew, shift and species as descriptive variables. So we want to leave that as it is because that's important information to us. However, on the left hand side, what we want to do is change the value for the maximum number of variables shown on the x-axis. This is currently set to 5. But if I change this value to 1, then it will look at the first selected variable, in this case date, and display that information only on the x-axis. However, the information about crew, shift and species is still going to be available to us, but it just won't clutter up our x-axis. So let's see how that looks. Click on OK. Highlight our column for logs and click on our individual's chart icon. So now we have a much cleaner graph, which has got a date shown along the bottom. But if we click on our detail window option at the top here and move our cursor over the various data points, you can see that the information for crew, shift and species is shown in our list of descriptions. And that's quite a nice way of making descriptive information about your data set available whilst also having a nice looking x-axis. Some of our customers have got at least 15 to 20 descriptions shown in this particular window and it's very useful for showing things like batch number, lot number, machine and any other salient information that you think can have an impact on your quality chart. If we close down this particular chart, we can also use this data set to demonstrate one of the other useful functions in Quality Analyst, which is the ability to break down your data by some of these descriptive variables. At the moment, every time I highlight a column and request a process capability histogram, I get a single process capability histogram that covers all 130 of my samples. However, because we've got information for different shifts, we might want to compare one shift with another. To do this quickly, we have a breakdown option at the top right, which if we click on it, it prompts us for a breakdown variable. From the drop-down list, I'm going to select shift, 
and then click OK. Now the next time I generate a process capability histogram for my logs variable, I'm going to get two. One for the day shift and one for the swing shift. This one has 63 samples, this one has 67. So it's very easy to see the performance and how it changes between two different shifts. Because I've set my breakdown variable, I also get different charts if I choose individuals. I get one for each of the shift, as before. I could set my breakdown variable to be species or crew, or I could even break down by date if I wanted to look on a monthly basis. So I'm going to choose date, I'm going to break this down by month and click OK. And the next time I produce my process capability histogram, I get one process capability histogram for each month in my data set. So we have February, March, April, May and June. The next thing I'd like to show you in Quality Analyst is how to utilise assignable cause and corrective action so that you can start to explain and log the reasons for any out of control data points that you find in your control charts. There's a little bit of setup required to get this up and running. So the first thing we need to do is go into our settings window and then select the tab for assignable cause corrective action. Our first task is to create a new category and one has already been defined for laboratory. However, you can have multiple categories because your data could be coming from multiple parts of your process. So assuming that I'm going to be looking at my logging data set again, I'm going to add a new category for logging and click OK. I now get to list all of the assignable causes, i.e. the problems that might result in an out of control or an out of specification data point and these can be particular to the logging example or we can have generic ones that we share amongst many data sets. So my first assignable cause might be a measurement error. I could have a problem with equipment. I could have operator error and numerous other causes as appropriate. The next thing I need to do is list the corrective action. So what have I done to prevent this particular problem from happening again? What corrective action did I take when this out of control or out of specification data point arose? So with measurement error, I might have retested or remeasured. If a problem with equipment, I may have informed engineering. Or if I had an operator error, I might have retrained the operator. There doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one relationship between assignable causes and corrective actions. So we can have multiple corrective actions for a single assignable cause and vice versa. So for an operator error, it might be that we referred to supervisor or any other number of corrective actions that you want to select. So now we've got our list of assignable causes corrective actions in our category for logging. We can now save these as part of our configuration. And then we can open up the data set that we want to use with these assignable causes. So I'm going to go back to my lumber example data set. And what I need to do is specify which assignable cause and corrective action category is used for each of my measurement variables. So to do this, I'm going to click on Edit and select Variable Definition and Specifications. And within this screen, there's a tab for assignable cause and corrective action. And I now get to choose all of my variables and I get to specify which category of assignable cause corrective action data I want to assign. So for logs, I may want the assignable causes and the corrective actions to both come from the new category of logging that we just created. For TPC, I might say, well, this is actually coming from laboratory data, so I want the laboratory assignable causes. Trim loss, the assignable cause could be taken from the logging list, but the corrective action 
could actually come from the laboratory list. So I've got some flexibility to mix and match between different categories. Now that I've set that, I can click OK. And the next time I perform an analysis of my logs data, perform an individual's chart, I can now start to tag the data and explain why points are out of control. So in this example dataset, I have a point that is below the lower control limit. Now if I want to use assignable cause corrective action to explain why that's out of control, I simply right click on the data point and select the option for cause and action. And that brings up the assignable cause corrective action drop down list. So here I get to choose the reason for the out of control data point and the action I took to prevent it from happening again. And this can be driven by your continuous improvement program. I could even add in a custom comment at the bottom here. And when I click OK, the data point gets a little book symbol attached to it, which when double clicked, yields a call out that shows the assignable cause and corrective action that's been assigned for that particular data point. And we can do exactly the same for the other variables in the data set, choosing from the predefined list that we created earlier. We don't have to have all of the callouts visible all of the time. It all depends on what you want to show in your particular control chart. So we've now got a control chart with numerous callouts explaining why we have some problematic data. And now that that's set, these assignable causes corrective actions are associated with those data points. So in six months time, when you come to look at this control chart again and go through the historic data, you can see all of the problems that there were and all of the solutions that were applied. It's quite useful to be able to see the information in this chart format, but what you might find even more powerful is the ability to use Pareto analysis on your assignable cause and corrective action data. If I go to my report menu and choose the option for assignable cause corrective action, I have an option in here for Pareto. Now if I select that, I get to choose the variables I want to produce a Pareto chart for. So I'm going to choose logs and click OK. And on the next window, I get to choose whether I see assignable cause or corrective action. So in this particular example, I want to see what all of the problems have been with the logs data. So I'm going to look at assignable causes. And I want to look at the entire data set. If I click OK, I get presented with a simple Pareto chart that shows me that there's been three instances of measurement error and only two problems with the equipment. So it's very quick to be able to identify the most common problem and where to focus our continued improve, continuous improvement initiative. Well this concludes our present webinar series. I hope you found that the information that you've seen useful and it gives you some ideas for how you can analyse your own information using the Quality Analyst software. If you'd like to download a fully functional trial version of Quality Analyst, you can do so by visiting our website. Simply go to www.adeptscience.co.uk and go to the Products tab and you'll find your way through to the Quality Analyst page. On the left hand side here is an option to download a demo, which is fully functional for 30 days. You can also contact us directly to discuss your quality requirements in more detail. Our email address is quality at adeptscience.co.uk and you can call us direct on 01462 48 0055.